Thank you for that. Well, uh, to discuss this all further, I'm now joined by international affairs analyst Marco Gazic, joining me here in the studio. Marco, good to see you. <laughs> it seems that there is perhaps a possibility of the British government um, endangering innocent citizens' lives here. It, 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 could that have really been going on? Well, it's certainly chosen to put them in harm's way. That's undeniable. Uh, and it's done so by deceiving them as to the source of their money, uh, which that these people are obviously desperate for in many cases. But it's not just been deceiving them. Uh, with this uh, policy, it's been deceiving uh, the Syrian people generally. It's been deceiving the British people who've been watching some of this footage. And indeed, the Middle Eastern and Western audiences generally have all been uh, deceived by, by what's been going on. And Perhaps uh, even worse for some people, it's been deceiving its own media as well, because according to these documents, uh, phony spokespeople have been put up to meet uh, prominent British journalists in Istanbul and places in Turkey and Jordan. And uh, in fact, they've been uh, trained by their British handlers. So really, they've been playing uh, the, the... I mean, it says something about Western journalists who can't tell the difference between a spokesman and a stooge, but they've been playing the rest of us for suckers as well, because these messages then come back into our political uh, debate. And these uh, urbane uh, pieces of coverage are then used as, as moral bases to try and make military solutions, which are usually bad for the region. It's not unusual, though, this sort of practice, is it? We're not the only country doing this. Well, we almost certainly are not, but the fact is that it's the NATO countries whose uh, false flag activities usually end up in rather nasty wars in the Middle East. If we see where, who started the wars in these places, it's usually NATO countries, and often it's false film footage which is used to inflame uh, temperatures at home and create this, I, uh, from, from Iraqi incubators to uh, bombing Yugoslavia on the basis of false massacre footage. These things have got a time on a history, they're very successful and they rely on the public actually forgetting the previous falsity and being prepared to swallow the next one. And the public, you say, are being deceived, but I suppose it's a case of the public thinking that they're getting information concerning who's on the right side here. And this is... Absolutely. But, but, and, but people would... This is taxpayers' money funding this, but if they're perceiving this is to be the right sort of thing, do you think people are particularly worried about this? Well, this is it. The aim is made to, to make them not worried by it, but to make them angry uh, about not doing it. The idea is to create an impulse for war, an impulse for... for uh, beastly acts to be taken against those beasts abroad. In that, so this is really about creating a moral mandate for a war. And uh, in, the document even refers to this being a, a tactic in a kind of strategic plan to bring political pressures to create a military solution. So this is really ultimately about the military-industrial complex, which will be very happy with this disinformation that's going on. And, of course, we've got to bear in mind those countries accused of using false flags or whatever of disinformation, they will deny that. Well, they, they will deny that, but then the, the evidence is in, entirely against them. If you, you could take any example, the Iraqi incubator story was entirely proved to be false later on, where babies were supposed to be chucked out by Iraqi forces uh, uh, before the Americans attacked them. And uh, we had in Yugoslavia a massacre at Rachak, which was a reason for uh, the basis for bombing Yugoslavia. And later it turned out to be entirely fraudulent, according to all the parties involved. Marco Gazic, thank you very much indeed for joining thank us in the studio. Still to come.